Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you guys with your next Algorithms Made Easy tutorial. So I suspect this tutorial to be fairly long, sorry about that, uh, because uh, I've searched the internet to see if there there's any sort of relevant information on this and there's a lot of there's a there's not a lot of information on interpolation on uh, interpolation um, searching so um, I kinda wanna get sort of in depth into everything and make sure you kind of understand every single thing you're doing so that uh, you can minimize your searches on Google if you have any questions and if you still have any questions after this tutorial feel free to ask in the description below I mean the comment section below sorry or feel free to ask me on Facebook or post on my forum or something along those sorry I had to check my phone quickly sorry about that um, so um, with with the binary search uh, we came to the conclusion that it is big O of n uh, of log n. What if I told you that we can make a variation of the binary search which could be O log of log n. Sorry about that. So O log log n. So it is even more efficient and now I know you guys are like wow and you guys are like mind blown and everything. So um before we actually get into how this actually operates, um, let's let's draw a, a graph right now. Now, in order f before we even draw the graph, in order for the interpolation search to work uh, effectively, uh, the each element should be uniformly distributed, right? So as you have see right here, they're uniformly distributed: one, two, three, four. Um, and so on and so forth. So for maximum effectiveness, that's what we need. And I'll show you why uh, that's what we need for maximum effectiveness. So uh, let's let's draw a, a graph now. It's gonna be hard with this tablet, but I might do. Okay. So this is going to be. The x is going to represent the index's value, and the y is going to represent the index number. Sorry about that. So now we're going to pick a new color. So as you can see, index 0 has value 1, index 1 has value 2, so on and so forth. So now we're going to plot the uh, index 0 and index 6 right now. So for, at index 0, the value is 1. So that's our first point. And at index six, so zero, one, two, three, four, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. The v oh, this is the value. Sorry, ah, <sighs> forgive me. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. The value is seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So somewhere around here. And since they're evenly distributed, we should get a fairly straight line. Hopefully, I'll try to get as straight as possible. Oh man, that's horrible. It's kind of hard. Put my tablet to my lap. Well, that's the best I was gonna get. And so, pretend that's a straight line. So we have a a, a fairly straight line. And if you remember from uh, from when you were learning math earlier on, I'm pretty sure you've come across uh, uh, an equation like this: y equals mx plus b. And uh, yeah, so this is this is what we're going to use in order to uh, sort of to find out what we what index our value is. So, for example, if we're finding if we're searching for the number six, right? Uh, if I'm searching for the number six right now, the, I already know the value. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know the value, and what I need to do is find the index where that value is stored. That's what I need to do, right? And so how am I going to do so? Well, I'm going to do so with a variation of this formula. So this formula right here is the slope-intercept form, uh, but I'm going to be changing it to the point-of-slope form. And the point-of-slope form looks like this. So it is 
y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And so what we want to do is y is going to be our index number that we actually want to find. So what we're going to do is we're going to re, uh, re kind of restructure this. So we want to do is take x1 and put it over to the other side. So we're going to say x is equal to m x minus x1 plus y1. So this resembles this right here. So this resembles y equals mx plus b, but it just look going about it in a different method. But this way is more, uh, it helps a lot. So uh, it helps a lot more than just looking at it from this point, uh, uh, this standpoint right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify that we want to find the value 6. We want to find 6 right now. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so 6 is at uh, index 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I drew my line straight, it would be the point would be over here. Okay, so that's the point that we want to find. So we have our we have our value, but we just don't have our y. We don't have that index yet. And so this is what we're going to do in order to find it. So let's plug in the values for our formula. So let's write our formula right here. So y equals mx minus x1 plus y1. So our y is unknown. m is a slope. So how do we find the slope? It's rise over run. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 over, I mean, subtract x1. And then we're going to multiply that by x minus x1 plus y1. So let's plug in some values now. So what is the what is the y2? So the y2 is up here, so this point right here. So the y2, the y2 represents the index number, so that's index number 6. So we're going to say 6 minus y1. So our next point is right here. So this is our y1 point right here, because it's our starting point. So our y1 is 0. So we're going to say 6 minus 0 over our x2. So our x2, we're going to check the x coordinate now. So our x2, so this is x2, y2 right here, is set to 7. And our x1, which is down here, which is our starting point, is set to the value 1. Now we're going to multiply this by x which is the value we're trying to find right now. So the value that we're trying to find is 6. So x, so 6, subtract the starting point right here. So x1, so subtract 1. And for our y1, our y1 is set to 0, as you specify there. So let me move this up a bit. So you can see sort of how it's going to work. So we're going to say y is equal to 6 over 6 multiplied by 5 plus 0. So that in turn gives us 1 times 5 plus 0, which equals to 5. And voila, all of a sudden we got our y and that's equal to 5. Now that's our index number. So at index number 5, the value is 6. And voila, with just one iteration or just uh, one formula, I should say, sorry, we got the index just like that. So by doing that, we started off from the right position and because we started off from the right position and we, um, and and the position that we started off from was the exact value we wanted, then it um, it becomes surprisingly faster, and then it becomes the best case scenario, which is uh, O, sorry, uh, O of 1. So, uh, now that we kind of got this theory down, down packed, it's almost at the 10 minute mark, so I think it's time to actually 
transfer this and put this into some code right now. So I know this might look a bit daunting, but it is pretty easy. Uh, it's pretty easy. If you understood the binary research from the last tutorials, you should be able to implement this no problem. So we're going to say bool interpolation search and the same parameters as the binary search. So let's go down here and we're going to say bool interpolation search the size and we have the value. Okay, so what we're going to do is just like before we're going to have our found and we're going to return our found and we're going to have our low which is set to zero. Our high, which is set to size minus one, and our mid, which isn't set to anything. And sorry about that. So our our while loop is gonna look a bit different. So we're gonna say while temporary uh, high is greater than or equal to value, and temporary low is less than our value. So that's what's going to be our while condition right now. And so now what we're going to do is we want to find uh, that index uh, that we're going to search against. Uh, so this is, well, I guess this is the mid or whatever, but let's get rid of the mid and we'll just use our index right here. So now let's, let's look at what our formula was before. So we're saying that uh, our y is equal to, so our index is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 times x minus x1 plus y1. Okay, so let's let's see how we're going to do. So the first one is, so firstly we're going to cover the, uh, the you know what, what we'll do is we'll cover it. Uh, step by step so we'll say um, let's say so the rise is equal to and we want to make it a just make this a double so we're going to say the rise is equal to x y2 minus y1 so the y2 represents the index number so we want the highest index number to subtract by the low index number so now when we check again they want the x2 subtract the x1 which is the run so we they want the value of of the total length that we're actually checking against so we're going to say the run is equal to temp array high subtract temp array low so now we want to find the x and the x is equal to x minus x1 as we specified in here x minus x1 so what is our x our x in this case is value uh, value subtract and our x1 is equal to uh, temporary low so let's go back here and then we're gonna say plus y1 so uh, we'll just add that towards the end of the formula uh, at the end. So now we have our index right here and we're gonna say, okay, our index is equal to rise over run. So we're gonna say rise divided by run, rise over one run multiplied by, we have our X and then plus our Y1, which is low. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do just like we did before in our binary search. We're going to say if value is less than temporary index, then we're going to set high equals to index minus one. Else if value is greater than temporary index, then our low is equal to index plus one. But instead of doing the else if found equals true, we're gonna put else 
low is equal to index and outside it we're gonna say if temporary low is equal to our value then we're gonna set found equals to true now why do we do this let's say that our our index right was one our it was one lower than it should be right and so when we say low is equal to index plus one now it's at the value that it should be once it goes up to the while loop now it says okay well temporary low is not less than value so that means we shouldn't execute this and we checked and we see that it's actually equal to the value so it saves us from doing extra it saves us in case this runs and then it makes this statement false and then all of a sudden found is not going to be set to true right because this else statement doesn't get executed and that's why we have it outside right here so now let's just test this out to see if it works then we'll do a quick run through of everything that's going on so right now uh, I have uh, I generated a thousand elements and I just looped through them and just gave them a value of I plus 10 so they're uniformly distributed by 10 and what we're gonna do is we're just going to um, we're just going to say okay we want to find the value 99 or let's just say we want to find the value of 46 and let's run this and voila immediately it found the value 46 so if you want to sort of see the process that it went through uh, I'm going to take this from my binary 2 binary search 2 and let's have a count and so sorry let me just put plus plus count and so based on the first iteration it found exactly what we wanted so it found the element 46 and yeah it printed out every single other number because that's what I basically told the printer rate to do that's what it does but after the first iteration it found the index immediately and so it is a lot faster than the binary search because uh, it cuts down the time in half by searching in the general area of where the number is going to be rather than just splitting it in half continuously and breaking it down so um, th basically that is it for this tutorial I well you know what I'll just walk through it with you guys again just to make sure that you guys get it so uh, we have sorry about that we have our formula so y equals m x minus x1 plus y1 so our x our y2 is equal to our our x2 y2 point is up here so let me write that down so you guys can visually see that x2 y2 and our x1 y1 is down here and then our the point we're trying to find right here is our x and our y so we don't know our y but we know our x because we're distributing we're distributing the value that we want to find and we, we want to find out the index where it is and so we our y2 is going to be equal to our index number so the index number is equal to um, our high right so yeah and then our uh, the y1 is equal to the index number here and y1 is equal to to the lower value and so when we say temporary high we want to actually get the value of the highest index that we're searching for and so we get that value from here we subtract from the lowest index right here in the x coordinate and then to get the x minus x1 the x is the value that we're actually searching for subtract x1 is this value right here and so we do that plus adding the low which is the x1 and we get the index and then we go and check against it and then we see what happens and voila we actually get our solution so uh, sorry for making this video so long but I wanted to make it as in-depth as possible so I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe don't forget to like my page on Facebook don't forget to follow on Twitter and uh, sign up on my website so that's it and bye for now